Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Tom Hughes and welcome to this week's version of Digital Discipleship. I've been praying for you in our time together. If you have a Bible, you can grab it. We're going to be in Luke chapter 5 verses 1 to 11. If you don't have a Bible handy, that's okay. I'm going to actually read the passage for us. Will you pray with me as we begin? So God, thank you for this time to dig into your word. Jesus, you say that we're not just fed by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So would you feed us our hearts, minds, soul, and will? Build our faith in this time. Lift our spirits. Strengthen us to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to jump in and read Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. This is what it says. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and a crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God. He saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to a man named Simon, and he asked him to put a little way out from the shore. Then he sat down and Jesus taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, Jesus said to Simon, put out into the deep water, and let your uh, nets down for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled uh, both boats so that they began to actually sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell uh, down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and uh, John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and they followed Jesus. Well, some of the th thoughts that I'm going to share come from a little devotional that my dear friend and uh, pastor I know named Walter Ramos sent out. So some are his thoughts, some are mine kind of mixed together about the power to try again. The first thing I think we see from this passage about the power to try again comes from verse 5, where Simon says to Jesus, because you say so. We can say in our culture, you know, seeing is believing, but here actually the order is reversed. Simon couldn't actually see why he should let his net sound again. They had worked all night. This was the exact same lake that they had worked in, the exact same waters that they had fished in. And yet the key is that he chose to obey before he could see, before he could understand the outcome. Let me ask you, where is Jesus asking you to obey first and understand later? Where is Jesus asking you, commanding you to try again? Who is he asking you to try again with? See, in this passage, the courage to try again came from Jesus and his words. Remember, these were the exact same waters and they had gotten nothing all night long. Today, I was speaking with a guy whose extended family member had been diagnosed with a form of cancer. And that family member and other extended family members never really wanted to talk much about faith, but now they do. Now they want to talk about the scriptures and about prayer and where we can have our hope. I reminded him to just keep on letting his net down again for a catch. Now, he's had many conversations with his extended family about Jesus and the hope we have in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And yet, what he noted was that family members that never wanted to talk about prayer, never wanted to talk about God and God's word, now are asking him questions. Now they're interested. In fact, recently I've heard several other stories of people who reached out to neighbors about attending CA 
prior to all this COVID um, season. And they had always been told no. But these people were telling me now, those same people that said no are actually participating online. In fact, one person told their neighbor who had invited them, you've always invited me and I always was too busy and I always said no. But I've been watching these last several months and now I consider myself part of Christian Assembly. Because you say so, Lord, we'll try again. Where are you willing to try again? In verse seven, we pick up the second thing. It says, so that they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. You know, fishing back then wasn't something you just often did by yourself. You did it in groups. Who can you join with in this fishing of evangelism? And who can join with you? You know, Jesus, when he sent his disciples out later, he sent them out two by two when they did evangelism. In fact, the word that we use for fellowship is probably better translated from the Greek as partnership. Jesus ties this to evangelism at the end of the passage. He says, well, from now on, you're actually going to fish for people. You know, it's not just anecdotal evidence that shows that some people are more open now to the gospel than they ever have been before. In fact, during the COVID season, one article I read recently said that Google searches for the word Bible and prayer are up 39.7% compared to prior to COVID. People are literally searching for God. Jesus says, put out into the deep water and let the net down for a, for a catch. You know, we're seeing this even at Christian Assembly. In 2019, we did an in-person vacation Bible school. And it was awesome. We had 220 kids who participated. But in this COVID season, we did an online one in 2020. And, you know, it was required creativity and commitment and dedication, both on part of the staff and the volunteers and parents to make it happen. But wouldn't you know it? We actually had 347 students kids participate in the VBS, 127 more, more than 50% increase of kids hearing about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage you to let your net down again and find ways to join with other Christians to do that together. Maybe band together in your life group and invite uh, neighbors or others to join you, whether virtually or maybe with your life group in person, socially distanced, outdoor to worship together and hear the good news. In verse eight, we see the third thing about trying again. He says, depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. Jesus knows what I don't know and can control what I can't control. There's a lot in life right now that maybe you feel frustrated because you can't control it or you don't know exactly how it's going to unfold. But here's what we do know. We do know Jesus's words, and here's what we can control, how we respond to them. Will you listen to Jesus and try again? Let your nets down again. Share the good news again with those around you. Some might have the attitude that you want to sit on the sidelines because you don't know how it's all going to work and you can't control everything. And honestly, I understand that. It can be tempting to want to kind of just wait until all this is over. And and then when things return to normal, then I'll begin to share my faith. But no, now is the time. Today is the day. People are searching now. Others can think, well, I don't know the perfect way to do it, so I won't do it at all. You don't have to know the perfect way to do it. Just share the good news. Let your nets down again and see what God does with that. The fourth thing we see is when Jesus says in response to Simon saying, uh, depart from me from a sinful man, O Lord. Jesus says, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. Now, Simon probably had no idea what that even meant. I mean, he did see the crowds that were there that required Jesus to get in his boat and push back from the lake shore. And yet he didn't fully know what that meant. But to hear that you're going to fish for people, that can be a scary thing. And yet, an even more scary thing in some ways is whenever you see God use your life to help people enter into the kingdom, to become true disciples. Recently, I was talking on the phone with a leader I know, and 
Um, he, he's a volunteer. He, he works in a different line of work. He's not a pastor. And he said, you know, I don't even know what I'm doing sometimes. I'm not perfect. But he's seen people respond to the good news. You know, the amazing thing is that God is interested in using imperfect people and including us on his mission if we will simply try again because Jesus said so. I want to encourage you, don't get discouraged. You know, it had been a long night of fishing for those fishermen and they felt discouraged because they hadn't seen any fruitfulness, any effect of their work. And yet, because Jesus said so, they let their nets down again and had such an abundant catch that they had to load it in a couple boats. That not only taught them something about Jesus's word, it taught them something about themselves, and it taught them something about how God wants to use them. And I would say God wants to use each of us as well to be part of spreading his good news and seeing people come into the kingdom if we'll just try again. Will you pray with me? Even as we begin to pray, let me ask you, for each of you that are listening to this, who do you know that is far from God? God, would you bring people to mind? Maybe for some it's a family member. Maybe it's a, a neighbor. Maybe it's a client. Maybe it's a coworker. Right now, whoever God's bringing to mind, would you pray for them to come to Christ? You might say, well, I've prayed before or I've shared before. Well, will you try again? How can you let your nets down again to help them know who Jesus is? Maybe you need to rally some of your friends like Simon did and be in fellowship together on mission, partnership on mission, maybe asking them to pray for your friend. Maybe you need to join them in, in, in some way and how they're sharing the good news with their neighbors and their coworkers, and you can partner to pray for one another. God, I pray that you would give us the courage to rally together and let down our nets again. And let me remind you, do not be afraid. You might be thinking, well, Tom, I don't even know if this is going to work. And the reality is Jesus calls us to be obedient before we even know how it's all going to work. I might not know the mechanics of exactly how it's going to work and all that God is planning, but I do know that people are searching for God. And more importantly, God is searching for people. So this week, I want to encourage you, as I've encouraged myself, to do life with fresh eyes, to see how God could use you to try again with someone that you've shared the gospel with. Pray for them again. Reach out to them again. You never no, what will happen when you simply take Jesus at his word? Will you do that with me? So God, we pray that you would give us the courage from your word to try again, to believe again, that you have good plans to gather in people that we know, or maybe even people that we'll meet this week or next week into your kingdom through our obedience of giving them the opportunity to hear the good news and come into your kingdom for the very first time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I hope this time in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, encouraged you. Um, if it did, uh, let me know and maybe just share on your social media platform so it can encourage others as well. Thanks, everybody, for this time, and I am praying for you that God will use you even this week as you try again.